Hi, I'm Caroline Smith, and today I'll be talking with a well-known face in our very own DMP department. You may know her from Down in the Labs or from her recent presidency with the Millier Society. However, today we'll be discussing a game she and many others use to escape our daily lives. Please welcome Dungeons and Dragons player and digital media production senior Zara Rethman. Thanks for joining us today, Zara. Thanks for having me. So to explain to people who maybe don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, well, how would you describe the game to a new player? Um, Dungeons and Dragons is a tabletop role play game, so that means you become your own character and the decisions that you make aren't your own, but like for your character you'll ro roll dice that will determine, you know, how well you do things, how well you see things. Um, it's definitely a fantasy world most of the time, so there's a lot of, you know, dragons as the name would imply. Sometimes you'll go into dungeons, not all the time. Some, you'll go on quests, you get to pretend to be someone else for a little bit. Okay, very cool. Is that what got you originally interested in the game, or is there like a different motivation for that? Uh, yeah, I always thought it was really interesting. Um, I started learning about it like in middle school, and my mom was just like, maybe you shouldn't. D&D has a lot of like really, you know, bad stigmas to it. And so like I shied away from it. And then towards the end of high school, I'm just like, all my friends are playing it. Like they're having a great time. I want to try it out. So I did. Okay, very cool. And that was actually my next question. I was going to say if you thought there was a stigma about it being nerdy or whatever, or do you think there still is a stigma around Dungeons and Dragons? Well, it definitely doesn't have the stigma it used to of it being, you know, de demonic and, you know, it was corrupting good, pure people and it was like murdering people. No one's been murdered over D&D &D except in like a fictional way. Despite the weird comics that have come out from like the 60s, the whole satanic panic. But it definitely has a little bit of a stigma of being like nerdy just because like that's who used to play it a lot. Um, I think it's definitely become more popular and it's not just like stereotypical nerds like people who live in their mom's basements only eat Cheetos and drink Mountain Dew. But, you know, some of those nerds still do play. And I think the, uh, the main thing that sort of gives it that, like, nerdy thing besides the fantasy setting uh, would be its character-making process. I think it's a really in-depth process, and it's a pretty lengthy one. And so I wanted to know, like, what's your character-making process? Um, it really depends, because I play Dungeons & Dragons, but I also play different tabletop role-play games. And so, like, they all have, like, different ways of making a character. But typically, I start with an idea of this is what I sort of want my character to be like. And then I sort of branch out from there. In Dungeons & Dragons, you have a character sheet. And so you have to roll for stats. And so I have to figure out, you know, is my character, you know, really strong? Are they good at, you know, sneaking around? Are they, you know, really personable? Do they have a lot of charisma? And then you know, once you start playing, that's sort of when you like really cement like a lot of characteristics. I had a character that I started playing and I'm just like, oh yeah, it's going to be like a little like child, like thief. They're going to like steal everything. They're going to be like a little nuisance to everyone. And the minute I started playing, I'm just like, I can't do this. And so it sort of turned into like a Studio Ghibli, like whimsical sort of feeling instead. I'm just like a little child, you know, running around, you know, eating worms. I mean, what else do kids do, though? They sort of just go around and eat anything they can get their hands into. That's very true. Uh, and so do you think that you stick to, like, a similar character type or class type for each game, or do you really like to mix it up across your campaigns? Um, I like to try and mix it up because I don't like playing, you know, the same thing over and over. Um, I definitely haven't played all the classes or tried all of the different races that there possibly is because there's just so many things that I could possibly do. But I feel like my characters aren't always similar. Okay, well, very cool. Uh, that's all the time we have before the break, so we are going to come back in a moment and find out more about her gameplay style. Stray cat colonies have infested the United States. With over 70 million feral cats living in the country, they bring serious health risks to our communities. Our own community of Warrensburg faces these same risks. That's where our local TNR services provided by Warrensburg Cat Advocates helps. TNR, meaning trap, neuter, and return, allows communities to limit their stray cat population over time while not harming the animals themselves. If you would like to promote the health and safety of both Warrensburg and cat communities, contact your local TNR nonprofit today with information on colony locations. This message brought to you by your friends in UCM Digital Media Production. Welcome back to today's Spaces of UCM interview. Before the break, we were discussing some characters you've created for your session. How would you say your character creation process influences your gameplay? Um. 
Well, sometimes I don't always know, you know, how I want the character to begin with. So I will put down stats, like things that I'm just like, yeah, this is what I think I want to go into. And then once I start playing, I'm just like, maybe that wasn't, you know, exactly how I wanted to do things. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and then do you think that, uh, I'm sure that the character itself also influences the way that you actually play the game and interact with your fellow party members? Do you think that has a big uh, key role in that? Yeah, I feel like the role-playing aspect of the game is, like, one of the biggest. I know that's what a lot of my groups try to focus on instead of, you know, like, oh, we're going to be super battle, like, heavy, like, we're only going to be fighting, like, ever. No, we really like the narrative. We really like interacting. And so it's sometimes hard to get into the mindset of characters because, like, I can't just, you know, switch instantly. Um, they all have their own different personalities, so it just sort of takes time getting to know them more. Okay, gotcha. And um, there's usually two different roles you can play when you play Dungeons & Dragons. You can be an adventurer, part of the party, or you can be a dungeon master. And so which one do you usually gravitate towards? Um, I have never been a dungeon master. I really want to DM. Like, I have ideas for a campaign, but most of my friends who are in the party, like, we have two DMs that we go back and forth between, and that's already a lot because we're in several different games just between the two of them. And so I just haven't really had a chance. So I typically do gravitate towards being a player. Okay, and then uh, if you could be a dungeon master, what do you think would make a really fun campaign? What type of elements would you want to implement? Um, that's a good question. Well, I have an idea for a campaign, and I'll go ahead and spoil it for you because I'm pretty sure that the people I'm playing with aren't going to see this. I'm not going to let them see it. Okay. Shh. It'll be a surprise. Mm -hmm. So um, I saw this post about how like some animals just have like this weird vibe to them. Like they seem like they're older than they are. And so I had this idea of all these old gods being in a battle and them deciding that they didn't want to fight anymore. And so they go into hiding as animals. And so like they're starting to like torment some of like these uh, villages. And so I was going to have the players go out and either, you know, kill these old gods and like wreck havoc or you know be like you're old gods you need to you know go back to your throne you need to go back to doing what you're doing you can't just hide and be animals okay that sounds really fun uh and one very important part of dungeons and dragons obviously is all the people involved i definitely say the more people you have involved probably the more fun uh and so i just wanted to say how important do you think the aspect of like players uh being involved makes the game more fun um you can't play Dungeons and Dragons alone. You definitely need other people. I I think the more the merrier, but once your party starts getting too big, it's really hard to, you know, hear what other people are doing. It's harder to interact with absolutely everyone. So keeping it like a fairly smallish group and definitely the closer you are with those people, like the better interactions you'll have. Like I've done a D and D session with people that I didn't know super well, and although it was fun, I wasn't able to you know get into character as well. I wasn't you know as comfortable. So definitely playing with my friends has been like the best experience because like I can be weird, I can do weird things, and they'll be like, yeah, this is fine. I'm not going to hold this against you for the rest of your life. Very fun, uh, and so I'm sure friends make it an even more time. So with that, I'm sure you've made a lot of memories. Do you know like a favorite memory you have from one of your Dungeons and Dragons campaigns? Uh, I have several. I know um, I'm in a campaign called God Slayer, and we have currently done like three and a half seasons. So on our se season two finale, there was only me and another player with our DM just because like scheduling conflicts. And so we were doing like the final battle and we just had like so many people come in and like it, it was on such like a big playing field like it was a whole like a ship that we were battling on we didn't use minifigures instead we decided to use my entire rug with like random cups and stuffed animals and whatever random things that we had in my room and so uh, the big, big bad evil guy was just going around literally kicking people off of the ship and killing them and that's how uh, we determine, you know, who was killed, who got hit for that round. But definitely I love some of, like, the memories, the inside jokes that we have. Um, in that same campaign in Season 3, um, there's a place called Joe's Fish Shack. And they have the juiciest, and I mean the juiciest fish. And so, like, every time we go there, we always say that in unison, and it's great. 
Okay, well, that sounds very fun. That's about all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for joining for uh, this episode of Faces of UCM. I'm Caroline Smith, and thank you for watching.